-hmm. So I think when we're discussing like our workflow, there's also like a, almost like a work web, mm -hmm. you know, everything kind of touches every aspect of the project because we're not just handing this off to one typesetter and then our InDesign file becomes a dead end and then we hand it off to somebody else and the ebook is a totally different thing. Everything's very interrelated. And the nice thing about, again, you guys as the project managers defining it, you get to make these decisions early on. So thanks for everybody for kind of chiming in. And I think, you know, we brought up a lot of interesting discussions, a lot of stuff to think about as you're working on the book. Um, but for now, what I want us to do is open the InDesign. We're going to go through just a brief overview of InDesign's interface, how we look at it, and then we're going to talk about just parts of the book. This may be a little bit of a, an overview for some people, um, but it's not necessarily, good. but I think it's important that we're all kind of on the same page. I remember from an earlier discussion, I think we were throwing around terms like half title page and you know why we use chapter tags in some places, not everyone was up to speed on that. So right now we're just gonna give an overview of how these books look and um, what they look like in our uh, workflow as well. So I have InDesign open. I'm going to open up the file that we downloaded, OTN Design Sample. And I'm going to share my screen. Alrighty, so everybody can see our InDesign file open here. I'm going to look for the chat so we can see that. There it is. Yeah, InDesign can take a long time to open. So I will move slowly while everybody gets up to speed. Um, and for now, I'm just going to give a, a real quick overview of what we're looking at. Your screen may not look exactly like mine does, but I'm going to show you where to find the things that we're looking for. So the main things I'm concerned about are looking at our document. You should see a big white blank page here. I'm concerned about our character and paragraph style. If you don't have that, you can always go to Window, Style, and this should give you everything that you need there. We can look at character, paragraph. There's a couple other things that come into play. I mean, they do come into play, but not uh, for the purposes of this demonstration. So if you don't have those windows open, please go to Window, Style, and Paragraph and uh, Character uh, Style. I'll give you another helpful in here. If you go to your Help uh, um, menu item and you can't find what you need, you can always start typing and it'll kind of give a smart search and limit the options as you start typing. So I'm typing or attempting to type Paragraph. It's not going great for me so far. Paragraph, there we go. So you can always start typing things like paragraph and then it'll limit and show you exactly where everything is. So those are the things we want open. Um, one major thing to point out here is that all those styles that were in the Word document that we worked so hard to compose are present here. So one of the nice things is that we're really like reaping the benefit of composition. And this kind of functions as our CSS, if you will. Every piece of rendering, and when I say rendering, I mean the text settings, the color, the lines, stuff like that, uh, are all defined over here. So you can see if I you know, highlight some text that jumps and shows me what style is applied to what text. I was gonna do a couple more kind of basic interface discussions so that we all know where to look for certain things. Um, the very important aspect part pages document over here. Again, any of these windows here that I'm looking at are under window. So window pages. And this will give us almost like a little map of our book. It shows page numbers, it shows um, little kind of thumbnails of how the book looks. Uh, there's something called master pages. Those are up here. And then you can kind of see the quote unquote master page applied to certain pieces of text. So we have a certain master page that defines how our body text looks. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Carla, which aspect? Was it um, like where to find like the help bar?
Oh, sure. No problem. Yeah, okay, so I'll, I'll go a little bit. So I've got my text tool, that little type tool right there, the T. And with that, I can select text. And once I select different text, you can see that it's highlighted in our paragraph style window. So I can select something different, like I can select this piece of text over here, and that's a B head. I can select this text over here, and it'll jump to A head. So that's one, one quick way of kind of identifying what's what. But the nice thing is that you always know what style something is because uh, it refers back to our composition file. Hmm. Give me one second. And I think if I can just ask if anyone has specific questions, then maybe um, Elvis can help you address those while I'm doing the demo. So not to, not to shove anybody off, but I don't want to lose my train of thought too much. And Sophie, I'll just address real quick. I just double clicked OTN sample uh, dot INDD and that opens up the file. Okay, so one other thing I want to show you guys just about how InDesign uses this text. I'm going to hit W on my computer. And that allows us to toggle back and forth between two views of the file. So here's our look at the actual text itself, kind of a print preview, if you will. And then I can see all the different boxes and things like that if I hit W. This allows me to select text frame. And this is really the, the meat of how this file opens. So we have different text frames. And I'll show you one other option. And the text is flowing from one text frame to another. Uh, the typesetter uses different things like certain characters that force text onto other pages. We can also just automatically set things like a chapter title to open on a new left-hand page or a new right-hand page. Um, so, but it's basically our Word document that is flowing from one text box to another. And you can see it goes throughout the entire book. And that's really what we're looking at here. I can select the text box and move it if I want to. I'm just using arrow keys there, but I can also use this black arrow up here that kind of moves things around. I can select text inside by selecting the text tool and just selecting text as you normally would. Next feature that I think is available to everything, two clicks selects a whole word, three clicks selects a whole line, and four does an entire paragraph. So very handy if you want to select several things at once. But I think that's it for our you know, very brief InDesign overview. We're going to use this a lot more in the third session. But for now, I just want to kind of guide you guys through the different elements of this book. Again, I started off with a sample document that we got from Kathy. So Kathy, thank you and your office for letting us use this book. Um, and I'm going to turn this layer on. So I just opened up a layer palette and I can click layer two on and off. Again, if you can't find any of that, it's always under window and layers. So this should be helpful to kind of follow along as we look at what different styles are, how we've composed things, and we're just gonna go through basic elements of how this book is put together. So first we're gonna discuss front matter versus body matter. So front matter um, is basically everything up to the beginning of the actual text of the book. And when I say text of the book, I mean the content. In a you know, fiction book, that might be everything up to page one called Ishmael. In our book, that might be everything up to, you know, the first page of unit one or the first page of chapter one. So that includes a lot of different elements like um, here we have a half title page. You see over here we're using CKHT. I'll go a little closer into that. Um, you know, design wise, the half title page is normally very small. It only includes the title of the book. Um, it's this little sort of like soft intro. Your book may have a series page. So also available from University of Connecticut, or maybe I think, uh, like Karen, I believe, Karen Bjork, you guys have published several books as well at this point, I believe. So you might have all of your books listed there. You may have a series of books. So maybe not every single book, but maybe every language arts book. So here we have a series page. Often this is included in the front matter. And we're just using series title and then series for each of these. Um, you may not have a series page, but you'll definitely have a title page. So now, rather than 
a half title page, which just has that one little bit of text. This is much more full information. Typically, the title is big, bold, easy to read. It may include a subtitle, you know, number two in a series, or, um, you know, physical chemistry one isn't chemistry great. You'll have your author. The author may have um, something like a, what department they're in, or maybe some more about their credits. Um, you may have one main author and several sub-authors or co-authors. In that case, we would have BKAU and BKAU1. And then typically you'll have info about your, uh, the press itself, the logo, where you are, the, you know, the name, where it's located. And then down here, we included an example, you know, blank press as a member of the publishing cooperative. And one thing I'm going to show you guys real quick is just kind of relating composition and typesetting. So we looked at that begin chapter text, and we're not seeing that in the book, which is good because we don't want to see that. But that's what these are. When I refer to conditional text, this is what alerts a typesetter that conditional text is in place. Um, the IDPT that I mentioned automatically does this to your file. So it automatically um, creates these conditions and hides the text and builds in a condition that is hidden. All right, questions before I, I move on, just about front matter, things to include on your title or opening pages. And I'll mention real quickly as well, this may be things that you as the you word. Kathy, I'm not quite sure I understand your question about how to view it. Right now I'm switching back and forth between the two applications. So I just have Word open here and then I can switch back into InDesign. I do, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, it may look slightly different if you're on, yeah, um, Mac or PC, but right now I'm switching back and forth between you know, Word and InDesign. So sorry if I'm moving a little fast. Okay. Um, right, so as I was saying before, these may be things that you need to build into your book. Like your author may not have all the copyright info. Your author may not have the series page built in, but these are the things that you as the project managers kind of need to think about a little bit and, and have that big picture overview of this. Your author may just be writing the text of the book and give you a document and it says sociology one-on-one -on -one at the very top, but these are the things that we would expect you to build into the typesetting of the book. So you may need to jump into the Word document and put these in and, and sort of do it. So another thing, your front matter will include copyright text. Here are the examples that we have relate specifically to the Creative Commons aspect of the book. Um, you may have different info here. You may have, maybe your author is referencing songs or things like that. You may need to include copyrights or thanks to blah, 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 for, you know, well, not thanks, that would be dedication. But you may have uh, additional material here, but this is kind of the bare bones. You can also have things like your ISBN, Library of Congress numbers, Library of Congress information, all that would go here on the copyright page. And this is the typical order we expect. I'll jump back to the top. Half title page, series and title, copyright, and then our contents. 